Hi, my name is Diane Schuster, and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrate the capabilities of CozyRock's SSIS Plus, which is a software suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. These demonstrations were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2005. The CozyRock tasks and components are available for SQL Server Integration Services 2005, 2008, 2008 R2, 2012, and 2014 in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. Dataflow Task Plus is an SSIS control flow task, and it is an extension of the standard Microsoft Dataflow task. Dataflow Task Plus is a control flow task that allows you to set up dynamic data flows. The dynamic setup options can be controlled with parameters from outside. This feature lessens the need to manually open and modify the data flow design when new source and destination columns must be accommodated. The first thing we need to do is to install Dataflow Task Plus in our toolbox. So we right mouse click in the toolbox and we go to Choose Items. And then we go to SSIS Control Flow Items. And we scroll down until we find Dataflow Task Plus. And then we check in the checkbox. And you can see it is a Cozy Rock component. So we click OK. And now you can see Dataflow Task Plus is in our toolbox. Now I'm going to go through step by step and show you how to configure a very simple package using Dataflow Task Plus. And uh, the requirements are, I'm going to be using three CSV files, so they'll be flat files. And uh, each of them have a different set of columns in them, so there's no single column that's common between all three CSV files. And I'm going to load the data or copy the data from the CSV files to SQL Server tables. So there'll be a separate table for each CSV file. So this package will dynamically change the column mappings for each CSV file to table pair. Here you can see all three CSV files. I've highlighted the names of the columns. As you can see, there are some columns that are common between two of the files, but there is no column that is common between all three. That's why we need to use the thunk column, as you'll see a little bit later in this demo. I'm going to start by defining the variables. We'll name the first variable file name. This is going to be used by the for each loop container we'll be setting up to loop through the CSV files. And then each of these files will match with a table with the same name in SQL Server. And the next variable we're setting up is called file location. This is the string defining where the CSV file is actually located, and it'll be using the file name variable as part of it. And the last variable I'm setting up is called table name. I have to set up this variable because our file names have spaces in them, at least some of them do, and so I need to put brackets around them for SQL Server. In order to complete the configuration of the variables, I have to open up the properties for two of them so that I can define expressions. First, we do the file location variable. We need to set it to evaluate as expression. I've already set up the expression for this, so I just paste it in. We evaluate it, and that looks good. Now we'll go set up the expression for table name. Again, we're just putting brackets around the file name. And of course, we also have to set evaluate as expression to true for this variable. Here, I'm just adding the brackets around the file name variable since SQL Server doesn't like it when you have spaces in your table name. And that looks good. Now we're done configuring the variables we'll be using in the package. 
Now we're going to configure the connection manager for our flat files. So we choose new flat file connection manager. We're going to name it source CSV files. We're going to go find the file location or the folder in which all the files are located. Of course, we have to change it to look for CSV files. Then we just choose one of them. And of course, this is going to be replaced during runtime. We check the checkbox here. There you can see there are three columns in the file that we selected. And now we go under the Advanced tab. We're going to delete the columns that are there and add in a column with the name Thunk Column. And that's in all capital letters. The reason for the Thunk Column is that certain source and destination components that come with SSIS require at least one column to be defined to validate properly. Because in this situation, and maybe in your situation, there may not be any single column that's common to all of the files or tables that you're working with, you can set up this Thunk Column, and that way Dataflow Task Plus will know that this column is not a real column, and it will remove it and set up all the columns dynamically at runtime. Now we need to edit the properties in order to set up our expression. You can see the connection string that we just set up. And now we'll go down to set up the expression. The property that we want to replace is the connection string property. We'll just use the file location variable as the expression. Here is what it evaluates to. And we're done with the configuration of the properties for this connection manager. Now we'll go configure our OLADB connection manager. It's already selected the correct database, so we're good to go on that. Now we're going to configure our 4-H loop container so that we can loop through each of the files and copy the data over to a table for each file. And we'll rename it, create a table for each file. Now we'll go in to configure it. In order to make things really simple so we can focus on Dataflow Task Plus, we're going to set this to for each item enumerator. And then we need to add a column. We're going to type in the name of each of our files, which are also the names of a table that will match to each file. And now we'll configure our variable mappings. We choose the variable we set up earlier named file name. Now we're done configuring the 4-H loop and we'll go configure our Dataflow Task Plus. We'll drag it onto our canvas into the 4-H loop container. And we name it Move Data from CSV File to Table. If we open it as if we're going to configure it, you can see that we get a different screen than if we were using the normal data flow task. And we really cannot configure this until after we configure our data flow. We'll be coming back here to the dynamic tab in a few minutes. Now we go over to the data flow canvas and we'll drag the regular flat file source onto the canvas. We'll change the name to read CSV file data. We go in to configure it, and the connection manager is already set up for us. We'll go look at the columns, and there's the thunk column that we set up from the connection manager. Now we'll drag the OLADB destination component onto the canvas. We'll change the name to Write Data to Table. We connect the green arrow. Now we are going to be using the advanced editor to edit our destination component. So we right mouse click in the component and we choose show advanced editor. We'll set up our connection manager here.
And then we go to Component Properties. We go down to Access Mode, and we change that to Open Row Set from Variable. Now we need to set up the variable. We choose the table name variable that we set up, which is the same as the file name, except that it has brackets around it. Now we see the thunk column, but the other columns are not set up. So we need to go to Input and Output Properties and External Columns and delete these columns because they're just in the one table that it's currently pointing at. And we'll put in the thunk column. Now you can see that the thunk column is mapped to another thunk column. Now you can see we have a warning message, and that's because SSIS tries to validate the external metadata, so we need to edit the properties for our destination component. We go down and find the validate external metadata parameter, and we change that to false. Now you can see the warning message has gone away. We're going to go back to the control flow at this point in order to finish the configuration of our data flow task plus. We open the dynamic tab and you can see we have our source and destination here. We need to enable both of them so that they can be dynamic. We also need to set up the column delimiter for the CSV files. So of course we'll choose the comma We're done configuring the package, but I want to set up breakpoints so that you can see what happens to the variables as we iterate through the for each loop container. And now we'll execute it. We just hit the first breakpoint. There you can see we have countries in all the variables. That's the name of the CSV file, as well as the table. Now we hit the next breakpoint, and there we have commodities by date. And now the next breakpoint, which is delivered commodities. Now we let it complete successfully. We'll stop debugging. We'll take a look at the execution results very quickly. And you can see the number of rows that were copied over for each file table pair. Now we'll take a look at what's in our tables. There you can see all three tables have the data moved over from the CSV files. And they're all in the correct columns, even though we did not manually map the columns to each other. This stuff really works. I just want to give you a couple of hints and tips that could save you some time. So first of all, if you do use the standard editor for the destination component, whenever you open that, it's going to refresh the columns after you've deleted them. So use the advanced editor instead, because that won't refresh the columns. And then, also, use an iterative process to create your final package. In other words, start with a simple scenario get that working, and then add on to it from there. And if the source and destination column names match exactly, there's no need to explicitly define the mapping, because the task will automatically connect the columns. Now, this implies that if the names don't match, you will be required to do some mapping. Also, enable the package execution log during development, and then when the Dataflow Task Plus executes, it will log important information of what the task does internally during the dynamic processing. And this will help a lot in debugging. Also, if you need to define an additional dynamic parameter for a component, but you don't see it in the Dynamic tab in Dataflow Task Plus, then the parameter is probably available for setup in the Dataflow Canvas using a standard SSIS expression. In this demonstration, I showed you how to use CozyRock's Dataflow Task Plus to set up dynamic data flows. I transferred data from flat files to SQL Server tables, where each flat file contained completely different columns from the other flat files. I accomplished this without using different data flows for each transfer. 
Changes to the metadata were accommodated at runtime, greatly reducing the need to manually modify the data flow design when new source and destination columns must be handled. I also gave you some hints and tips that will save you time when configuring your package to use this extremely useful task. This task comes in a package of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. And that concludes this demo.